everyone, and welcome to the class of 2013 Junior Pinning Ceremony. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Hannah Feigenbaum, and I am a special and elementary education major. Now, let's all go around and say our names, what majors we are, where we're from, and an interesting fact about ourselves. <laughs> don't worry, I'm only kidding. In writing this speech, how could I possibly pick one thing to talk about when the field of education is such a broad topic? I could talk about how I ended up here, but each of us has had our own journey. Most of us have probably wanted to be teachers for as long as we can remember, while for some, it may be more of a recent discovery. Maybe you were inspired to become a teacher because of a family member or a friend or a specific enlightening event. Regardless of what put you on this path, we are all in this room because of our commitment to education and because ultimately, we all want to make a difference in the lives of our students. <coughs> so instead, I hope that you'll bear with me while I talk a little bit about what I have learned during my time in the School of Education. I have learned that there will always be those who will have negative things to say about us and our future profession. I have heard people talk about how easy our classes are, if only they knew, right? <laughs> there are those who think teachers are just glorified babysitters and that other professions are a lot more prestigious. Some people are convinced that anyone could teach. I have even seen articles that talk about how overpaid teachers are. <laughs> Maybe all of these people have forgotten that they got where they are because of teachers. I have also learned that we work just as hard, if not harder, than everyone else. I have learned that not everyone is cut out for the teaching profession. I have learned that even a room full of adorable first graders can be intimidating. I have learned that wait time is a necessity and classroom management is key. I have learned the importance of being a culturally responsive teacher. <laughs> I have learned that when you get overwhelmed, it's okay to take a break, and it helps to complain to people who know exactly what you're going through. I have learned the importance of addressing students' needs, regardless of what they are, because they will directly affect the classroom dynamic. However, I have also learned that some factors such as a student's home life, are often out of our control, so we must learn to work within our means. I have learned that there will be both good and bad days in the classroom. I have learned that on the bad days, we need to figure out what didn't work so we can change it. And on the good days, we need to figure out what did work so we can do it again. I have learned that some days will be so tough that I might forget why I became a teacher in the first place. But then a student will inevitably, inevitably do something wonderful to remind me. I have learned that teachers who claim to have all the answers are often wrong, and those who admit to their own shortcomings <coughs> are usually right. I have learned that it is not enough to be only knowledgeable <coughs> or passionate, but that a skillful teacher must contain both qualities. I have learned that the difference between an effective and an ineffective teacher often means the difference between success and failure for students. I have learned that when we enter the classroom, it is part of our job to leave preconceived notions at the door because every child deserves to be treated as an individual. And finally, I have learned that teaching is not about just giving our students all the answers, but is instead about helping them discover their own truths. Of course, I would not have learned any of these lessons without our wonderful faculty and staff here at SED, so I would like to take a minute to thank them. They have taught me countless tips and techniques that I will carry with me always. They teach by modeling and truly embody what it means to be an educator. I would also like to thank all of our family and friends for being here on this special night. And now, I would like to end with a short story. 
This past year, I went to the Trotter Elementary School to help run the annual fall festival. Little did I know that I would meet a young boy who would change the way I view teaching. I volunteered to go into Mr. Sadler's learning and behavior class, which is a self-contained kindergarten class for students with special needs. Shortly after I entered, the students began getting into costumes and preparing for their parade through the school. One particular student nearly didn't make it out of the classroom due to some behavior issues, but luckily he calmed down and joined the rest of the group. I was drawn to him, and when we re-entered the classroom, I sat down to help him with an arts and crafts project. We were making jack-o'-lanterns out of paper plates, and I said, let's glue on the eyes. Say please, the little boy replied, very matter-of-factly. I naturally giggled because I was surprised by his adorable response. I consider myself to have pretty good manners, but this was not a phrase I would typically add please to. Of course, I humored him. Okay, let's glue on the eyes, please, I said. After my next similar statement, the boy again reminded me to say please, and I, once again, laughed before obeying. Suddenly, he looked at me and quietly mumbled something. What did you say, I asked. Don't laugh at me, he answered. I was taken aback, and my heart nearly broke. How could I have been so naive and insensitive? Here was a boy who, perhaps, had been struggling with manners, but had now learned to be overly polite. From my perspective, I was laughing at his cute response. From his point of view, I was making fun of him. I apologized for laughing and asked for his forgiveness. Be patient with me, he said. Those four words floored me. Be patient with me. In that moment, that four-year-old child taught me more than I could have possibly learned from any textbook. I will never forget his wisdom or his message. From him, I have learned to be patient, to see things from my student's perspective, and above all, to remember how much I can learn from my students. When I think back on my brief encounter with this child, I am reminded of these lyrics by Bill Collins. In learning you will teach, and in teaching you will learn. As teachers, we must never stop learning because our students will constantly wow us with something new. They challenge us to work harder, to become better, and to achieve greater. Tonight, as we reaffirm our commitment to teaching, we are also devoting ourselves to a lifetime of learning. I hope that all of us continue to learn from those around us, most especially our students. I wish each and every one of you the best of luck as we continue down this path. Thank you.